T-minus 17, final guidance release. We'll expect engine ignition at 8.9 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, ignition sequence started. All engines are started. We have ignition, 2, 1, 0. We have a liftoff. We have a liftoff and it's lighting up the area. It's just like daylight here at Kennedy Space Center. The Saturn V is moving off the pad. It is now clear the tower. After checking out the spacecraft in Earth orbit, they burned out of orbit and headed toward the moon. Houston, we're right in the middle of a snowstorm. We're not there long way. Ron Evans, at the controls of the Command Module America, moved in to dock with the lunar module Challenger. They pulled Challenger free of the booster's third stage, then continued the three-day coast to the moon. Even as Cernan, Evans, and Schmidt headed toward the moon, directly below the Apollo 17 control room, flight director Don Putty ran his crew through a launch simulation for the first Skylab. December 10, 1972. America and Challenger went into orbit around the moon. Houston, this is America. You can breathe easier. America has arrived on station for the Challenger head. The next day, December 11th, Cernan and Schmidt entered the lunar module and undocked. You look just as pretty in Earth light as you do in uh, sunlight. We're level with the top of the Massif now. Roger. Okay, one five one one five one zero. Enter. Okay, uh, Jack, pitch Down over here. Going on four. Okay. Four on pitch over. Okay, Gordon, we're out of eleven thousand at nine. Okay, stand by for pitch over. Oh, are we coming in? Oh, baby. Okay, okay, through 9,000. Stand by for pitch over, Jack. 8,000. I'll need the pro. I'll give it to you. Pitch there over. it is. Proceeded. And there it is, Houston. There's Camelot. Wow. Wow. Target. I see it. We got them all. 42 degrees, 37 degrees, to 5,500. 38 degrees. Challenger, you're going for landing. 40. 42 degrees through 4,000. 47 now. 47 degrees through 3,500. 49 degrees. 3,000 feet. 53 degrees. Okay, I've got Barre, I've got Poppy, I've got the triangle. That's 2,500 feet, 52 degrees. Each dot is good. 2,000. Each dot is good. Fuel is good. 
54 degrees, Gene. Approaching a thousand. Approaching a thousand feet. 57 degrees. Okay, you're through a thousand. I'm taking radar altitude and things altitude degree. You're through 800 feet. H got's a little high. Yeah, I don't need the numbers anymore. Okay, you're 31 feet per second going down through 500. 25 feet per second through 400. That's a little high, Gino. Okay. 300 feet. 15 feet per second. A little high. Eight dots a little high. Okay, I've got feet 60 Okay. Okay, 9 feet per second down at 200. Going down at 5. Going down at 5. Going down at 10. Cut the eight dots. It feels good. 110 feet. Stand by for some dust. Little forward, G. Little forward, forward a little. 90 feet. Little forward velocity. 80 feet. Going down at 3. Getting a little dust. Good. Four, 60 feet. Going down about 2. Very little dust. Very little dust. 40 feet, going down at 3. Stand by for touchdown. Stand by. 25 feet, down at 2. Feels good. 20 feet. Going down at 2. 10 feet. 10 feet. Cut contact. Stop push. Engine stop. Engine arm. Proceed. Command override off. Oh, control, I had old things auto. Okay, Houston, the Charger has landed. December 11. Sunan, then Schmidt, left the lunar module to begin Houston, their first EVA. As I step off at the surface at Taurus Litro, we'd like to dedicate the first step of Apollo 17 to all those who made it possible. Their first job was to unload equipment, including their rover, the electric car in which they would drive to the exploration sites. That's beautiful. This has got to be one of the most proud moments of my life, I guarantee you. We thank you very much. As Cernan drove the equipment-laden rover, Schmidt carried the scientific experiments package called ALSEP. I'm going to go deploy an ALSEP. Have at it. In Houston, scientists in the science support room watched, correlating and directing their movements. Okay, Bob, I've got my tools of the trade right here. I'm As Schmidt set up the various experiments, Cernan drilled a series of holes, both to collect core samples and to implant experimental probes. Man, oh, we're out, we're out and you eject a blanket of camel off for sure now. Yeah. Man, it didn't feel like this stuff was that hard. No, I'll get it. I knew there was something I needed to get do. Get the jack in over here. Other side. Let me, let me uh, put some weight here. He's not going anywhere. No, he's going slowly, Bill. Very slowly. I'm going to get this thing out now that I got it. Boys, you know, that's what you call getting down into your work. 29 and a half. Yeah, it's 29 and a half minutes from now, but remember, they left this side a little bit late. There he is. Okay. So Jim, you better make it clear to Parker that we got to pull out. On the moon and on the Earth, they were fighting time now. There are just so many hours of oxygen and water in the backpacks. So many hours of life in the vacuum of the moon. We're up in the area. Watch that cable. 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 Oh. Cable. Cable. Watch the cable. Cable number one. Let's see if I can't crack the uh, corner and get that contact. See if I can't get it. <laughs> Look at the folders out there. Jesus. It was time to head back to the Challenger. Activate experiments and get back inside. Man. I was strolling on the moon one day in 
They would have one task before they got to work exploring. The previous day, they had broken a rear fender of the rover. The dust thrown up was causing trouble. Apollo 16 commander John Young had worked that night in a pressure suit on a way to fix the fender. On the moon, the astronauts put it together. The fender section formed from a lunar map molded with tape, then held in place with clamps from the lunar module telescope. It was a repair that would last the remainder of the mission. Now that's good. Get that's it in the middle here. Get it in that place. Right in this little, it's only about a four meter depression. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, you're on the other side of the rock. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I want to get back here. That's good. Oh, man, go slow. Right that station one still looks like a 45 minute stop to me. Well, we'll check on that. I don't think it, it is, though. Well, it looks that the way that line crosses there, it should be right at 45 minutes. Well, that, that, doesn't, re that doesn't reflect being half an hour behind, I don't think. Yeah, you got to take a half an hour out of the front part of that stop for that much behind, whatever you're behind. that the trainer does have a decal on the lean. We are checking for the direct correlation to the rosé. Uh-oh. There it went. What happened? Oh, I lost my vice. I see it. I see it. I took number one in the right direction. Flight experiments. Go ahead. Yeah, we're thinking yep. uh, one of the alternates here, or one of the possibilities okay, here, will be a spending such so little time out there, it's not really worth spending the time plan. driving out and back. Come on, back then here. We'll, we might spend the time back here closer into the limb, going to set completely. But that's not prime yet. Covered. We're thinking that way. Okay. Give us uh, uh, time to implement that. Though. Yeah, we'll try to do that. Flight surgeon. Go ahead, surgeon. Roger. BGU update for the first three hours was uh, Commander 1185, LMP 1130. For the first 15 minutes of the third hour, we have 1,000 on the Commander. That's the same, Bob. On the LMP, so we're is that 1,100 on the big last? big that yeah, I've looked at right. okay. look like the Jabroic rock I was talking about. Possibly uh, upwards of 50% uh, plagioclase rather than 30 like the Mari put an intermediate gabbro of some kind. And one big block there had very sharply defined uh, uh, parallel parting planes. Uh, I think there's a foliation of minerals that uh, parallel that parting, but I'll have to check it out. Okay, copy that, Jack. Those uh, parting, parting planes go over the uh, or go through the whole boulder on the order of uh, at least three meters long and outcrop.
Apollo science will continue, and I'm sure might say the mysteries uh, will continue to come out for many years to come. But of this I'm sure, a man has learned that space is his to explore, and man will return to space to explore, to the moon and beyond. I'm firmly convinced that it's changed the whole basis of philosophy, including religion. I don't think that we've begun to see uh, what the era of spaceflight really is. It, uh, we've got a long way to go, and I hope I'm living when we leave this solar system on a venture to find another planet Earth. Once more it was time. Gene Cernan and Jack Schmidt returned to the rover to drive back to Challenger. But before they left the surface of the moon, there would be a brief ceremony. It's a rock composed of many fragments of many sizes and many shapes. When we return this rock, or some of the others like it to Houston, We'd like to share a piece of this rock with so many of the countries throughout the world. Everyone remembers Neil Armstrong's first steps on the moon and the words he spoke. Few remember the final speeches just three and a half years later. The task of summing up the Apollo program fell to Gene Cernan as he stood on the surface of Earth's nearest neighbor. This is Gene, and I'm on the surface. And as I take man's last step from the surface, back home for some time to come, but we believe not too long into the future, I'd like to just let what I believe history will record that America's challenge of today has forged man's destiny of tomorrow. And as we leave the moon and Taurus Littrell, we leave as we came, and God willing, as we shall return, with peace and in hope for all mankind. God speed the crew of Apollo 17. Uh, Roger, Dino. Thank you very much. Bob, I am up on the ladder, and I'm going to be going through the hatch. Yeah, okay, I'm fixing to turn the camera off. All right. Dean, i got to get out of your way. Yep. Houston, we're in the blind and we're going. 